Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 29th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week, I mentioned how a set of vulnerabilities, in particular the elevated privilege at which Exchange Server is running, can be abused to escalate privileges from a random Exchange user all the way up to domain admin. This is a pretty significant problem in particular if you're worried about any of your users, for example, falling for a phishing scam or the like, or if you are trying to prevent some of these lateral movement techniques that an attacker may use once they get a hold of a user's workstation. Now, Boyan today spent quite a bit of time researching all of this and playing with the different exploits that were published for it. Well, his conclusion, it definitely works. So read his diary for more details. He also also mentions a couple of steps that you can take to mitigate some of these issues. There is no patch for this available at this point and there's also apparently no sort of good way to tell from your logs that someone is attempting this attack against your exchange server. I think we got a pretty embarrassing vulnerability in Apple's FaceTime that allows an attacker to receive at least audio and according to some reports, video as well, before the target actually accepts the call. The way this works is actually pretty straightforward. You're calling the victim and then you're also adding yourself to the call. So you're basically setting up a three-way call between you, the victim, and you again. Now, if you accept your own call, then the call is established, and it's also established to the victim. So at this point, you start receiving audio from the victim. This vulnerability is apparently already actively being exploited. It's, after all, pretty straightforward to actually make this work. And this will work on all devices support FaceTime, so not just on iPhones, iPads, also on Macs that have FaceTime enabled. Now the victim will still see the phone ringing and the eavesdropping works for as long as the phone is ringing. Apple did indicate that they're working on a patch for this and they're expecting to release a patch sometime later this week. An endpoint security company Minerva Labs came across an interesting variant of an information stealer that they are calling Azo Ralt. Uh, now, this is a piece of malware that Minerva Labs has been writing about uh, for a while now, but this new version has sort of a new trick up its sleeve in that it's actually a validly signed binary. Now, it arrives in the form of a fake Google update. Now, remember, this is for Windows, this is not for Android. So just an update that you apparently receive for from Google. Well, uh, people may actually click on it and install it in particular since it does use a valid signature. However, the signature or the certificate used here is not actually a Google certificate. Now, Minerva Labs kind of obfuscate a little bit who it actually authenticates, but really all it says is that someone with a valid certificate did attest this software is, well, valid and not necessarily benign. And of course, we do not really know who actually provided the certificate here. It's still somewhat uncommon, in particular in the Windows world, to have people deliver signed malware. I do see it probably more in the OS X world because there, People have to more or less uh, use signed software in order to evade some of the gatekeeper features. And it's also pretty straightforward with Apple to get a basic developer certificate. All you have to do is essentially pay a hundred bucks and they will give you a certificate. Apple actually came out recently in the most recent version of uh, OS X with a sort of more robust uh, software attestation where they do a little bit more research uh, into the company before they actually hand out the certificate. 
And then a little update to yesterday's podcast. I mentioned this BGP issue and how the FRR router was sort of vulnerable to this. Well, uh, Mike Tangsa tweeted an update to this that uh, this problem was actually fixed early in January. So no longer a problem if you applied the necessary patches. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.